for me, uh, art is not uh, just a practice. For me, art is a way of life. I made this film we are going to see in some wilderness in America, and it's called Runner. Let's have a look. My films are playful and uh, psychogeographical. They are made to found film sets on the street and in the countryside. The performance is site-specific, and it's always in conversation with the medium of uh, film. And I've shared these films online as intervention on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and uh, recently in uh, museums and galleries, including at uh, the Venice Biennale 2015. Uh, I want to, uh, to talk with you about what keeps me running, and that's the gift and the importance of uh, play in gift giving. This is a philosophy in Malawi we call Nyao. I grew up in Malawi, as, uh, that's the, a tiny country in Southern Africa. According to the World Bank Development Index 2016, uh, Malawi is the poorest country on earth at the moment. I find that very interesting, wouldn't you? I mean, why would you want to be mediocre? As far as I'm concerned, uh, there are only two interesting countries on earth at the moment, and uh, that's uh, Luxembourg. Um, uh, this is the richest country on earth with the uh, GDP per capita of um, $100,000, and uh, Malawi, the poorest country on earth with a GDP per capita of $200. Uh, uh, the guy in Luxembourg is uh, some uh, 500 times richer than the guy in Malawi. I wonder how the guy in Luxembourg managed that. Does anybody know how Luxembourg got rich? Is it oil or I don't know how countries get rich, but I can tell you for sure how Malawi uh, remains poor. And uh, that's because uh, Malawi is a, a gift-giving country, a gift-giving society, if you like. Uh, the economy of the country is set around the circulation of gifts rather than the selling of commodities. So it's not necessarily a negative that uh, Malawi uh, is the poorest country on earth. In Malawi, uh, to be a good person, Muntuabuino, is much more important than uh, to be rich. Now, a good person in Malawi is not necessarily the one who reads the Bible every day or prays like Mother Teresa. A good person in Malawi is simply the one who knows how to, uh, to give a gift. My mother was very expensive while she lived because she liked giving gifts. You can see she's there uh, in white on the left-hand corner, and uh, on, the, on her right is her husband. He liked giving too. Uh, when I was growing up, I was fond of giving uh, drunken lectures on philosophy, which have continued to influence me as an artist today. So if I say anything untoward, don't blame me. You can blame my father then. Well, when I started working, uh, I would uh, send money to my mother, and she would qu quickly give it away to relatives, friends, and beggars who came to our house in Lilongwe. Anybody who went to our house got something. So my brothers and sisters had to work so hard, very hard, to, to, to keep her happy. Well, she died in uh, 2002, uh, uh, a poor woman, poor but proud, as the most prodigious gift giver in the neighborhood. But I think that's because she lived in town. You see, if she had lived in the, stayed in the village, whenever she gave, other people would have given her back. The problem of giving in town and people took advantage of her generosity. Her story, I think, is very much a story of uh, Africa. Generosity now in Africa only brings misery, so we Africans have to think carefully what it means to give. Well, for a start, I can tell you that uh, a gift is not uh, an easy thing uh, uh, to give. When you give something, people secretly resent you because you put them under obligation to return that gift. Unless, of course, they are profiteers, and they will keep coming to get your gift, gifts until they squeeze you dry, you know? Isn't that what capitalism is about? <laughs> well, the problem of giving has taxed uh, many philosophers in history, 
uh, the French uh, philosopher we have, I have up, uh, concluded, after studying various gift-giving societies uh, around the world, that a gift, in fact, demanded uh, recipro reciprocity, a return. It's not the sentimental uh, present or charity which is one-sided and highlights the donor's impotency. I would say that uh, aid agencies uh, who work in Africa at the moment are naive in, a, in some way. They don't realize that uh, by going to Africa and just giving things to Africans without allowing Africans to return the generosity, that in the long run only leads to resentment rather than gratefulness. Now, the problem with uh, uh, reciprocity is that it can uh, quickly lead to cynicism. Uh, we think of, uh, let's say, Facebook, Whenever you start liking people's stuff, they like your stuff back. Uh, when you stop liking their stuff, they stop liking your stuff. So the reciprocity can quickly lead to a certain kind of cynicism and pettiness. Well, in Malawi, we have a solution to a problem of giving, and that's to give through play. A uh, philosophy we call Nyao. And this uh, kind of plays for adults. I'm not talking about children's play. Children can play anyhow, anyway but the business of playing is very difficult for uh, grown-ups. So what the Chewama tribe use is they use masks. When the masks come out, people are more relaxed and they imagine themselves as higher beings, something bigger than life. And they start giving indifferently. And they also start taking indifferently. And by the end of the day, by the end of what we call Gure Wankuru Festival, that's orchestrated by these masks, uh, nobody feels uh, indebted or obliged. It's like if you go to a party, you can drink anyhow without feeling o o obliged to your friend, but if you, uh, maybe you are two of you, you go to a bar, you start drinking, you feel you're obliged that you have to uh, buy each other's drinks. Anyway, so in play, a gift can be given without incurring a debt. And uh, long after the, uh, the masks have left, what we call Gule Wankuru, the great play, a collection of masks which sometimes can include what you wear on the face or the, an animal structure. When they are left, uh, they leave behind generous personalities. That's why we Africans like to dress up. So many dandies in Africa. Because for us, every day is an occasion for play. We are ready to give a gift. And you can see here my father at yet another party with a friend. Uh, well, what's happening here is press, playful personality extended to uh, basically uh, to, to other Malawians. Malawians, uh, a welcoming lot, a friendly lot, and, and part of the uh, playfulness of their uh, character comes from uh, this phenomenon of masks. At the moment, uh, we have uh, the masks, Gula Wankuru as a UNESCO World Heritage from 2005, I think. Uh, and that means this philosophy now of gift giving through play uh, belongs to all of us here. So we have to know uh, what it means to give through play and why it is important to give uh, through play. Well, when I was growing up, the, these sort of masks had been moved to museums and what was left in Africa was marginalized. Uh, it was no longer traditionally masks this is another example of a mask, Elvis, a Chewa mask. They would be at the center of society, infrastructure. But now there are more tourist curiosities. But it didn't mean that uh, mask making died in Africa with the uh, marginalization of these masks. It moved elsewhere. And one place where you could find it when I was growing up in Malawi was cinema. Now, the kind of cinema uh, I watched growing up in the late 70s was improvised from foreign reels. And basically, this phenomenon started because a lot of the films that came to Africa, like many things, were secondhand. The projectors would break down all the time. And so the uh, projectionists had to find a way of entertaining people with broken down projectors. They would uh, change the reels, they would uh, fast forward them, they would uh, heavily edit them. And the kind of film they were looking for is for non-linear film. A lot of films coming from the West tend to be linear. You have to wait there for two hours 
to, 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 to find out what happens at the end. In Africa, you won't have that patience. Because the conception of time in Africa is nonlinear. And nonlinear time is also preferred because it's, co it's conducive to play. And so when these films played, they same, served the same function that masks served in the village. Uh, this sense of play uh, was inspired by going to the movies and again, um, um, the playfulness that was generated there was taken into the everyday life. And play generated into the everyday life means that people were generally uh, more generous than they would be without uh, uh, gifts, without play. Well, I've been inspired by uh, 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 this uh, Nyao cinema of my childhood to make films. And the film I first showed you at the beginning is inspired by this nonlinear time, uh, this aesthetic of broken down film. And uh, I have uh, traveled uh, uh, the world now showing my films, as I say, uh, at Venice Biennale, for instance. And along with these films, I also show playful works, installations, in which play is welcomed. And when people come to my show, they again play as if they're at a Nyao festival, if you like. And I make new connections, I make new friendships. This is uh, The Last Judgment at Venice. And another work, I did a project I did at Yale University based on a research on a, an Italian situationist. And um, so I, wa I want to, uh, maybe we, we have time to see another film. This is P Pickpocket. I made this one in London. And basically, as I say, my films are just made spontaneously. I saw, I was walking down the street one time with a friend, and uh, we saw a man who appeared to be like from the 19th century wearing the same coat as me from the 21st century, and I followed him down the street. And this kind of encounter and created this film called Pickpocket which ended up on Facebook, uh, eventually in a gallery, and then maybe an art festival, like uh, Venice Biennale. So that's what pickpocketing looks like in London at the moment. <laughs> now you may ask yourself, uh, what is a gift if not pr a present or charity? Well, according to the uh, French philosopher George Bataille, he says that the gift is excess, excess in systems. The surplus wealth that have, has to be uh, spent without return if the carrying capacity of that system is to be sustained. Uh, a lot of the world's problems today can be blamed on the fact that the world, in fact, has too much. Generally, the picture we are, to, we are given in the days of capital is that the world, we, we, we have, there are wars because there's a the scarce of resources on earth, but actually it's the opposite. A lot of problems that we have in the world at the moment is because we have too much. The world has ac accumulated too much, and this is uh, creating all sorts of kinds of problems. Uh, capitalism, with its tendency to accumulate, can be seen as a constipated system that has forgotten how to give. And this amnesia, if you like, can only lead to catastrophe. Now we speak of environmental catastrophes, uh, the problem of refugees, global warming. This could be all simply because the world has forgotten what it means to give. Well, I think perhaps the work of the artist today is to remind people what it means to give. Thank you very much. Thank you.